Welcome to another edition of Rams on the Clock. Our guest today, CSU football player Mason Myers. And Mason, you've had an interesting May, one unlike anyone that I know. Uh, you live in Moore, Oklahoma, and you were home when the tragic and catastrophic tornado hit. Kind of walk us through that day, what you were doing, and then I know that uh, you were very involved in the recovery hey. efforts. Uh, so I um, woke up that morning, um, went up to my dad's work, drove my truck off, and um, came back home. Well, my mom came and picked me up from his work, and uh, we went to the grocery store, and we didn't know the storm was coming. And You didn't know we, the tornado was on the horizon? We, we had an idea. Um, one of our family friends is uh, one of the chiefs at the fire department there in Moore, and he uh, let us know like some bad weather was going to come. And, um, so we had an idea a storm was coming, but we didn't know how severe, we didn't know how fast, and you never know sometimes with those storms how fast they're going to come, or mm -hmm. when exactly, sometimes they can be, sometimes not. Um, we went to the grocery store and came out, and that's when we saw the weather was really bad, it was lightning, it was going to start hailing, and um, we quickly got home and started watching the news, and that's when we saw the big supercell on TV, and uh, realized it was headed straight for more. So, uh, what did you do from there? Uh, we just sat and watched the news, and when the sirens went off, we finally got my grandpa and my sister, and we quickly rushed into the closet underneath the stairs to get ready to take shelter, because that's what the news was telling us to do. And how long did you stay in there in the uh, in the closet underneath the stairs? Um, you know, probably ten minutes. And then when we heard, uh, my mom has a little app on her phone, and when we heard it was veering off, I was already out of the closet, and I had my grandpa's keys to go to the street where my buddy lives, because I didn't know, we didn't know exactly where it had hit. So the tornado had passed through, Yeah. and you came out, you went down the street to find your friend, Yes. and you saw the devastation at that time. Yes. And it had to be amazing. Could you hear the tornado pass through? Yes. You, you could. It was, it was, it was loud. And they say it's an indescribable sound. It's like a locomotive, a train engine. Right? Yeah, it sounds like a train, yeah. And uh, it just, it's so loud, but, you know, you, it's different. Like, when you see it, and it just, it was just sitting there hovering, and that's, and it's just so loud, you can't imagine, like, how is that making, you know, mm -hmm. how is it that loud, so. So you went, you found your friend, and then from there, you really played a part in the rescue efforts. Uh, so... My buddy is actually a coach at my old high school, and we ran straight for the high school because we didn't know how far down it down it had a hit down the street. So we went to the high school first, um, realized the high school was okay. Um, then we went to the elementary school, Briarwood. Uh, people were already getting out there, so we started running through the neighborhood looking for people we might know, you know, just anything we could do to help. And we started hearing people and helping the fire department help. Were you pulling we were, them out? We were pulling wood out to help get to the people, trying to calm the people, just saying knock or anything, and we helped get some people out. And then uh, eventually we went to go look for more of our friends, and then we came across Plaza Towers, and then I got hit really hard with the... Uh, so uh, from there we just continued to look and help whoever we could and whoever, you know. What gave you the motivation to jump in and say, I need to go help people? You know... I don't really know, it was my best friend, I didn't know where he was, because you couldn't get a hold of anybody, the internet was the only way, Facebook was the only way you could get a hold of people, sometimes the text would go through, but um, that, just the fear of your friends and family not knowing what really, how, how far did it really go, where was it exactly at, because you just, the news people can tell, only tell you so much. Because right. they're not out, actually out there, you know. I mean, some of those storm trackers are, but they're still chasing it. They're not saying where it hit. So One of the amazing things for me has been how resilient the people of Moore, Oklahoma have been. What's the feeling in that town right now, having been through that tornado, and even there's been other tornadoes in the Oklahoma City area after? Um, you know, from the people I've talked to and my friends who have lost their houses, they're, uh, they're staying pretty positive and just helping other people too. I mean, those people that have lost things are still trying to help other people and it's just a great community and, you know, I've lived there my whole life and 
that's how people have always been. When someone's in need, someone is always there to help. So it would seem that, that one of the storylines out of this is football and academics. I know are important to you, mm -hmm. but that gave you a chance to show others what's really important and helping other people out. It, it did, and um, I definitely learned. You know, I, I grew up the, those last couple weeks I was home and uh, learned what you know life truly is about and it's about the people that you're with and you spend time with and you care about you know in school football those do those are big things in my life but you know I learned that family and friends are very important is that what you would tell your teammates yes definitely and those guys are my family here in Colorado, and I would do anything for those guys. So. Great. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on Rams on the Clock today with Colorado State football player Mason Myers.